Hello, thank you for joining me uh, on Sunday um, when we join together and our focus is Jesus Christ. We come together in worship and in response to his love. Um, I wanted to uh, say thank you for joining me. Uh, I also wanted to um, say thank you um, for giving and trusting and believing and supporting uh, what the Breslau Church does. Um, even though our, our program is suspended and our church building is temporarily closed, uh, I just wanted to say thank you for your faithfulness and giving. Uh, if you do want to give um, and uh, through electronically, uh, you can check out our website, uh, www.bemc.ca. Um, and then one of the tab is gift. And then there's if you click that, there's details on how to give electronically. And uh, once again, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, for for giving, uh, so uh, let's let's uh, bow our head and let's pray. Oh God, I just wanted to give thanks for your presence here, despite uh, the challenge of uh, social distancing. Uh, when we join our hearts together, we come together as one, and we come together because of Jesus Christ, because of what you have done. You came to carry our sin, sins on the cross, and you came uh, to um, uh, you, you you rise again on the third day. You rose again on the third day, and we give thanks that you have given us hope, that you have given us um, a relationship with you. God, that relationship is just priceless. And so today, as we uh, take this time to hear your word, we pray that uh, you will speak to us, draw us close to you. Uh, help us to love you more intensely. Help us to know you more intimately. I give thanks. Give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so today we continue our preaching series uh, during this Lent season called Letting Go. Uh, we have been examining the dark places of our hearts uh, so that uh, when God's light shine in, um, that we'll be able to love God more. Um, and we'll be able to draw him closer. Uh, that's a wonderful thing. And this year, uh, our focus, it's uh, you matter to God, you matter to us uh, because of how God loves us unconditionally. We wanted to share that with others. We wanted to put others first. So we have this theme called you matter to God, you matter to others. And when we look at this series of letting go, as we continue to ask God to uh, reveal and examine the dark places of our heart and replace it, with God's love, um, when we let go of those dark places and replace it with God's love, uh, we will be able to not only um, uh, come before the Lord closer, but we're able to see others as how God sees them. They matter to God, so that's why they matter to us. Today, we're going to look at another familiar passage. It's from the Gospel of John. Uh, John chapter 11, verse uh, 1 to 45 is a long passage, but uh, we're not going to um, uh, go into all the nuggets, go nuggets, but we're just going to a, a few of them that help us to stay focused. Uh, John chapter 11, verse uh, 1 to 45, uh, letting go of our lives, letting go of our lives. Um, this passage, um, uh, before I go into, I wanted to uh, lay out the outline uh, you will receive it by email uh, or or you would see that there's a sermon outline or, or, or sermon notes. Um, if you can follow that and, and have your Bible open, it will help us uh, uh, to go through that uh, um, so that you don't uh, miss anything. Um, so basically, uh, we're going to categorize uh, the 45 verses into three themes. Uh, the theme of uh, faith, hope, and love which is uh, what we're focusing on as uh, followers of Christ. Uh, it's a faith, hope, and love. Uh, so we're going to divide those uh, scriptures into those three categories, categories um, faith, hope, and love. And then we're going to look at a passage uh, cross-referencing from the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 11, verse 1 to 6, which is, uh, once again, about how we lift out our faith, how we lift out our faith. Uh, so that's going to be very interesting. And it's going to be very exciting, um, and then um, we're gonna we're gonna have some response in terms of um, uh, what God speak to us. So uh, fasten your seatbelt, 
so this passage, um, it's about uh, Jesus uh, coming to heal a good friend of his, Lazarus. Uh, so Mary and Martha, who's the sisters of Lazarus, uh, they send word to Jesus. They send a messenger to Jesus saying that uh, the one you love, Lazarus, it's, it's ill. Please come and, uh, it's kind of assuming that come and uh, touch him so that he can be healed. He's, he's quite ill. Um, Jesus stayed for another two days and then finally he decided, okay, we're going to go back to Judea, um, which is uh, uh, very dangerous um, because at that time that uh, uh, the, the people that wanted to kill him wanted an excuse. Um, so he's going to go back. It's quite dangerous. But he decided that I'm going to go back uh, after two days that he received the message. He didn't go immediately, uh, which is uh, uh, something for us to ponder. But then uh, he go back and then, uh, of course, he saw uh, Martha uh, and then he saw Mary. And then um, and Jesus said that, well, if you believe, uh, you will see the glory of God. And so uh, they led him to the tomb. Um, and then Jesus said, uh, open the stone, roll, out, roll away the stone. And then Martha said, well, uh, he's been dead for four days. Uh, body starting to rot and starting to smell. And Jesus said, well, if you believe, uh, you'll see the glory of God. So they rolled the stone away and Jesus called out, Lazarus, come out. And then, of course, this uh, dead man walking, uh, he came out uh, with linen and cloth wrapped around his face, his hands and feet. Uh, Jesus said, unbind him and uh, let him go. And, uh, and then uh, those people who saw that, they believe. Oh, that's an amazing story. Well, how does it relate it to uh, letting our lives go, letting go of our lives? Well, first of all, our faith. Uh, what is faith? Faith usually tied with hope. And faith is a uh, belief too. And so in this scripture, uh, it show up eight times the word believe. And a lot of times that it's basically it's believe in, believe in Jesus. It's action. It's a verb. Um, not a head knowledge of believe. But it's like, how do we uh, have action that follow uh, when we believe in Jesus? So uh, faith, it's... Um, uh, uh, what we hope for, uh, believe in what we hope for, um, and assurance of what we do not see. Uh, having faith is believe in what we hope for, and assurance of what we do not see, uh, which is from uh, Hebrews, uh, book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1. Well, eight times it show up. Well, what are those eight times? If you follow the notes, you will see that, that the first one is uh, in, in verse 4. Um, uh, Jesus said that, I'm glad after he heard the message. Uh, he said that I'm glad um, I'm not there uh, so that uh, you may believe. Well, what is he saying? So that you may believe. Um, and then uh, he, he goes and uh, uh, go to chapter uh, verse 25 and 26. And he was saying to them, um, I am the resurrection and the life. He's saying to uh, Martha now, he's uh, with Martha now. He said, I'm the uh, resurrection and life. Uh, those who come uh, uh, to me, uh, those who believe in me, even though they die, they live. And in verse 26, he said that uh, those who believe in me, uh, they will not die. And then he said to Martha, do you, do you believe in this? Do you believe in me? Uh, do you put your trust and dependence on me? And then uh, he keeps going. Uh, he goes to uh, verse, um, uh, 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 verse uh, 39 and 40. And he said to, uh, uh, because Martha said, well, don't don't open the stone because uh, it would have smell. And Jesus said to uh, uh, did I tell you to believe? Uh, you will see the glory of God. You see all that when we believe, when we put our trust in Him, God is being showcased, so to speak. Um, people uh, will see God. And then uh, He continued um, saying that verse um, uh, 43, He said that uh, when he, before He uh, asked Lazarus to come out, He looked up to heaven and uh, speak to His Father. And then he, he gave thanks, and then he said that I say this uh, so that people can believe. It's, it's not for me, because uh, God the Father always hear him, but he said that so that people can believe. And of course, at verse 45, uh, he said that um, uh, at the end, uh, those Jews, uh, they believe. Um, and believe, it's, it's, it's faith. Uh, it's putting our trust in God. It's an action uh, word. Um, so we... Just categorize um, a few scriptures, uh, eight of them, actually, uh, of belief, of trust, uh, of faith. And that always uh, ties with hope uh, that we believe in uh, uh, what we hope for 
and then we have assurance and what we do not see. A little bit later, we're going to look more deeply into that. But let's look at uh, the last category, which is love. Um, there's three times that it showed that it, it sets love in here in verse three. Um, it sets that uh, the one that is sick, uh, sorry, the one that uh, you love is sick. Uh, they're pointing out at Lazarus, that Jesus loved Lazarus. And in verse 5, it says that uh, Jesus loved Martha and her sister, which is Mary, and Lazarus. And then uh, verse uh, 36, um, the Jews saw Jesus uh, uh, wept. And then the Jews were saying, the people who were crying with uh, Martha and Mary, they were saying that, wow, you see, uh, he loved them. Uh, sorry, he loved him. He loved Lazarus. Um, and how do we know Jesus loved Lazarus? Uh, we can also see that in uh, verse 33, uh, uh, when um, Jesus went to see Mary and then uh, the Jews also were crying with Mary, um, Jesus uh, was, uh, his spirit uh, was deeply moved and was troubled. Um, that's how we know that he really loved them. It's because he, he, he's really troubled. His spirit was deeply moved. And in verse 35, it says that uh, he wept. Jesus cried. Jesus wept. That shows that he, he, he really loved them. And in verse uh, uh, 38 as well, um, that once again, it shows that uh, he said, uh, it sets there once again, he was deeply moved. So when we look at that, we can see that, you know, um, not only Jesus really loved uh, Mary, uh, Martha and Lazarus, but Jesus also loved us. Um, and it shows that in those emotions. Um, and Jesus, of course, loved us, came and died on the cross for us and came back to life on the third day. So we have no doubt that Jesus loved us. Well, so now we're cross-referencing to uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1 to 6. Um, I wanted to bring out three things. First, it's that uh, how we lift out this trust, how we lift out this faith, how we lift out this belief that we believe in as an action, how we lift that out. It's that first, uh, we believe that God is more real um, uh, than what we can see, what we can touch. The God that we believe is much more real than what we can see, than what we can touch, than what's in the world. Do you believe in that? It's, our, it's your action, it's our action, um, showing people that, that we believe in a God that is more real than what we can see in the world. I think it's kind of hard, isn't it? You see, our world, we, we have been taught, we, our, we ingrained that what we see, it's more real than what we cannot see. Right? Like, like if there's pictures, if we like nowadays, like, like anything you do, if it's not on camera, it's not real. If you, if I cannot see it, it's not real. But it's different in the Bible. It's different in our faith. It's that the God is more real than the world, than what we can see and feel and touch. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it like, like how can it be? Well, you can look at it, all the design in the world. Just look at the birds who, who go up, who go south. I look at the geese. There's three navigation, navigating systems in their body. Design it. Who put that design there? If you look around, what we can see points us to what we cannot see, which is God, which is way more real. That's why it sets a faith. It's what we hope for, an assurance of what we cannot see assurance of what we cannot see you see now this is my platform i'm i'm in my van now this is my platform it's no longer the pulpit and it's dark the outside is dark but i can trust that as dark as it is soon the sun will came out will come out soon the sun will come out what i cannot see now it's more real and what I can see now, like sometimes if you think about life, just like now with the COVID-19, this is a big storm, COVID-19. Everybody has to be isolated. Um, everything has to be sanitized and everything. This is a big storm, right? We could so easily to lose our faith because this is what we can see. We trust what we can see. But do we trust a God who's more real? Than this world, than the COVID-19. Do we trust God? Jesus said, I am resurrection. Not only that he's saying that we have eternal life when we come to him. He said, I am also life. That means that he's giving us an abundance life right now, right here. How can we have an abundance life as Christian and when we live? It's when we trust the God that who is 
real, who we cannot see, but is way more real than the world. Yes, this COVID-19 is storm, but God's promises, God's love, so that it will allow us to be free, to live an abundant life. What abundant life it is, is to live under God's standard. It's live in a way that is pleasing to God, that is love God, that is free. Well, if we look at Hebrews uh, uh, chapter 11, verse 6, this is our second point. Our first point is the God is more real. The God that we cannot see is more real than the world that we can see. Because He is the healer. He is the one that who can cure. He's the one in control. He's the one. So that when we come across challenges and face difficulties, that we will not fret, that we will not be in fear. Because God is more real. God's it's the one that we trust. Second point in verse, um, uh, he, uh, verse 6 in Hebrews 11, it says that without faith, we cannot please God. When we cannot, when, what does that mean? When we do not believe in Him, we can, we can please Him. What does that mean? This is what it means. Like, let me give you an example. Uh, a lot of times that when me and my son, we um, go to different places, we go on trails, and then we go on... Uh, a lot of times we go by the lake and he likes the water. Um, sometimes he go in and catch tadpoles. Sometimes he would go into the water and catch crayfish. Uh, a lot of times when we go to different places, he really wants to go to the water. I, I can tell he was really, really excited going to the water. But sometimes the water just looks really deep. Sometimes the water looks really cool in winter. And, and, and I can tell he really wanted to go. He really wanted to go. Sometimes I tell him not to go and doesn't doesn't want to believe me. Um, he wants to go in, uh, even though I can see that it's really deep. Um, after a couple times, um, one time we went to this place, and uh, I could see that he really wanted to go in. Uh, and then once again, I said that, well, uh, please do not go in. Uh, it's not safe. And then he didn't go in. He didn't go in. And I was like, hmm. That's interesting. I said, well, why didn't you go in? Uh, he said, because I trust you. I trust what you said. I trust what you said is true. You see, when we believe in God, how do we please him? It's that when we trust him, what he said is true. When we live our lives under his standard, under his, his will, you see, sometimes we wanted to please ourselves. We wanted to use God as a, as, a, as a way to get what we want. We wanted to please ourselves. But it sets that without faith, we cannot please Him. What does that mean is that when we do not trust Him, we cannot please Him. Well, uh, let me show you an example uh, of trust, of, uh, of pleasing, of pleasing God. Um, it's in um, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Um, it's Enoch. Enoch, it's a guy that uh, who never experienced physical death. Uh, he, it says in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that he walked with God. And that's all we know. And thank goodness, in New Testament, here in uh, Hebrews 11, verse uh, uh, 5, uh, it says that uh, uh, God commanded him, he pleases him. He trusts him. Can you imagine somebody like if, if you're like deeply in love, you know that um, you don't have to ask them. Uh, they always think of you. They always trust you. They always think of, you know, when they pass by this place or oh, they think of, oh, would you like to go there? When we uh, when they see you uh, see certain kind of food, oh, that person must love this. Oh, um, um, uh, they see certain kind of fruit and then they would think, oh, my goodness, uh, that person must love it. I'm going to get this uh, uh, cake or get this strawberries or whatnot. You see, Enoch pleases God and trusts God to the point that I bet like God is like, well, well, I, I love this guy so much. I just want this, want this guy to be in heaven. I'm going to call him up. Of course, I'm, I, 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 I'm kind of half joking, but you see, in Scripture, it says at uh, Hebrews eleven six, God commanded Enoch please him. He trusts him. He pleases him. And then in the second half of uh, uh, verse six, uh, Hebrews eleven verse six, 
it talks about that uh, you must, um, those who come and believe in him must believe that he exists. Sometimes it's kind of wondering, well, if you don't believe he exists, then why do you come to him? Right? If you don't believe he exists, why do you come to him? I think sometimes uh, another way to, to, to say this, it's that, um, like, I have times that some people come and uh, uh, ask for advice. There are times that it's the same thing. I go and ask for advice. But after I did, um, I, I don't act out the advice. Or some people will come and, and, and ask me for advice, and then I say to them, this is what it is, and they, they don't act on it. It's it's like they treat me that like that, like I'm nobody. Or, or I treat somebody that they're nobody when I ask them for advice and don't act on it. This is what it is. You see, there's people there who come to the Lord, but they don't believe. They're Christians. They're following Christ, but they don't believe in God. They don't act act uh, uh, um, like they're Christian. It's so easy to fall into that. It's so easy to fall into that, that um, we come to Him, but we, we, we treat Him like He's nobody. We come to Him, we don't believe He exists. Um, and this is what the third point is, that uh, um, when we come to Him, um, he matters. He matters. Um, when we trust in him, like like we take his values, we take his um, uh, will. We we he matters. And then the example of it's it's Abel, uh, eleven, uh, verse four, uh, Hebrews eleven verse four. Abel, Cain and Abel, Cain and Abel. Uh, they they offer they give bring offering to God in Genesis. And then uh, God looked at uh, Abel's offering and he was very pleased. Um, and he looked at Cain's offering, he wasn't that pleased. And then, uh, and then uh, Cain was very mad. And then uh, God said to him, you know, if you don't uh, look after your sin, it's crouching at your door. You need to do something about it. You see, it's not so much about uh, Abel's offering. It's much more pricey. Uh, you, people say, well, Abel, you know, he look after the, the animals. He has to kill the animal and bring the offering. So he's more more expensive. And then uh, uh, Cain's offering, look after the farm. Uh, it's, it's, it's grain and stuff. It's not that expensive. No, God is not like that. God doesn't, you know, like what God is looking at is God is look at the heart. You see, Abel, it's not a one-time trust. Abel. Daily, every day, he take God seriously. And then when he offers, he offers his best to God. You know, when we come to God, we need to believe that he exists. So those are the uh, three uh, belief, um, three faith lessons, three um, um, points that we can learn from about how we follow God. First is that we believe that God is real, more real than our world. Um, we can just look at look look at our world. Um, God is more real than the world. So in terms of coming to challenges, we can we can be a free person. We trust. We have this hope. When we pray uh, afterwards, uh, we are able to uh, let go of our burdens because we have this hope. Um, and then God gave us life abundant. It changes us right now. Not only eternity, it changes us right now. Second thing is that we can, we, 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 we please God when we trust in Him. God, we don't understand. God, we don't know why this happened. God, we don't know. We don't understand. But we trust in You. We follow You. And that pleases Him. And third thing, it's that, um, it's that uh, He's important. Our daily life is not like a one-time thing. Um, you know, a lot of times that we look at it, it's, it's like a one-time thing. Abraham and Isaac. Abraham offered Isaac. He muscled his courage. A one-time thing. It looks like a one-time thing, but no. God has trained him uh, to that point. If you look at anybody who plays sports, um, whether it's tennis or golf, and you, you think that, wow, or basketball or baseball, you think, wow, they can, they can do that. Even though when they're under so much pressure, they can perform, they can do that. But we haven't think about that, you know, how much work they have put in into practicing. For us, our faith is the same. When we trust God, um, do we every day, every day, every single moment trusting Him? Not only at one time, not only, oh, uh, I have exam, I'm so worried, God, I'm going to come back to devotion and I'm going to trust in you. Or oh, God, I'm in danger. I'm sure God, God appreciate that as well. But it's our daily thing, daily thing, trusting in Him. Well, so how does it relate it back to our story? Letting go of our lives. What motivates us? It's coming the fact that God loves us. 
in here God love uh, Mary, Martha, Lazarus, to the point that he was deeply moved, to the point that his spirit was in trouble, was, was troubled, not in trouble, was troubled. Do we know that? Do we know that it is because of that love, of that sacrifice, of that he's setting example that he, his life pleases God, not please himself. He has faith, pleases God. And we too can learn from that. And so how do we respond today, you may ask? I would encourage us to take a moment of silence. Um, first, ask God for forgiveness. Ask God for forgiveness. And second, Ask God, God, what are you speaking to us today? Is there any area that I need to ask for forgiveness? Is there any area that I have fall short? Is there any area that I have caused grief that we weren't trusting God? We think that faith is for to please us, to get what we want. And then finally, receive God's love today. Receive God's love today. He loves you. He loves me. He loves us so much. Um, so um, I just want to say thank you for joining me. Um, so today, when you look around, I pray that you will see that the, this God is more real. He's 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 keeps saying, um, "Do you believe? Did you do you believe?" So that you can see the glory of God. So that God can be magnified so that God's work people can see ultimately it's all for the glory of God that's for the glory of God he said that you know I waited so that when I come he said in the story he said well I waited so that when I come you will see that God will glorify his own son that God will be glorified um well let us pray. Oh God, I wanted to give thanks for today. I want to give thanks for you open a way to, for us to come to you. I give thanks that it's not only coming to you and getting resurrection, getting eternal life, getting a life beyond this life, but that it's, it's, it's to have life right now when we can see right now through the eyes, through the perspective of, uh, of heaven, that, that we have that assurance in you, that when we lift our life, our perspective has changed, that we have you to have our back, no matter what people say about us or say to us, no matter how difficult a situation it is, no matter um, how much that we don't like ourselves, no matter what um, um, the world is, we have you as an anchor because you love us. And so with that, God, I pray that you will you help us to orient ourselves towards you. Our life is to please you every single day. is to respond with your help to love you back because that's our purpose. That's our goal, that we want to be like Jesus, to love you back. And finally, Lord, uh, help us to live day by day, moment by moment, to learn, just like Mary and Martha. They were in a journey to believe in you. They believe in you, they come to you. But until the end, they see more of you and they grow more deeply with you. And just like the Jews who were there crying, they all believe afterwards. They all put their trust in you. They all fully depend on you. And so, Lord, today, help us to fully depend on you in everything everything so that we will be like Lazarus when you call our name let him go he's free come out come out from that dark clouds come out from that tomb come out from the bindings come out and we praise you that you are our God and you love us in Jesus name amen well, once again thank you for joining me have a wonderful day